Hello, welcome to another video of our MDCN series. My name is Dr. Mariam, and today we will be going over the MDCN style for respiratory examination. But before we begin, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe as it will really help out the channel. For our respiratory examination, we'll carry out our normal routine of reaching the patient and doing our wipe up. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I want to examine your lungs today. Is that okay with you? Okay. Thank you. So we screened our patient. We've positioned, which is patient lying supine, palms facing up at 45 degrees, chest exposed, and we're at the right side of the patient. So respiratory examination begins with infection. We need to inspect the patient as a whole. Is the patient in any respiratory distress? Is the patient looking stylose? Is the patient attached to anything like oxygen masks? Then we need to inspect the chest for any scars, any deformities like pectus excavatum, pectus carinatum, and we need to move to inspect for any chest asymmetry. So we're looking to make sure that the chest is symmetrical. After that, we move on to inspect for the respiratory rate. The first step we need to do after inspection is count the respiratory rate. And for this, there's a little thing that we have to do. We have to be seen distracting the patient so as not to affect the respiratory rate of the patient. So the way we do that is we sneakily pretend like we're counting the pulse, but we're actually looking at the patient's chest for rise and fall of breathing. I'll just measure your pulse up, relax. So ideally you're supposed to count for one minute, but then you don't have that kind of time in the exam. You can just count for 30 seconds and multiply by two. Normal respiratory rate is between 12 and 16 breaths per minute. After counting the respiratory rate, we move on to palpation. And the first step of palpation is to check for tracheal centrality. The way we check for tracheal centrality is using three of our fingers, the index, middle, and ring finger. We ask the patient to relax and we put our ring finger and our index finger on either sides of the sterile notches and we use our ring finger to run down the patient's trachea. So normal tracheal position should be central, but it can be deviated in certain abnormalities. For example, in tension pneumothorax, it can be deviated away from the lesion, while in cases like atelectasis, it will be deviated towards the lesion. So after checking our tracheal centrality, we now move on to chest. And the first thing we need to know about chest examination in the respiratory system is that we divide the chest into three long zones, upper, middle, and lower. The upper long zone is above the nipple, the middle long zone is below the nipple, and the lower long zone is the axilla. So, but this rule only applies to the anterior chest. It's a little bit different when we go to the posterior chest. The first thing we need to do for chest palpation is to check the chest expansion. How we do that is we ask the patient, sir, can you please breathe in and breathe out completely? We need them to empty their lungs and then we check for the three lung zones. We grab the patient with our thumbs almost touching, but our thumbs need to be off the chest wall so they can move. And we ask the patient to take a deep breath in and out in and out. So our pumps should be moving apart at least five centimeters away from each other. We do that for the middle lung zones. So I can you please breathe in and out, in and out. And we do that for the lower lung zones. So I can you please breathe in and out, in and out. Thank you. After chest expansion, the next step in palpation is to check for tactile deformities. How we do that is using the ulnar part of our hand, we place it over the three long zones and ask the patient to say 99. So, sir, can you please say 99? So, the most important thing you need to know here is that you need to be comparing side to side. You should not be seen doing this. You will fail the exam. You should be doing comparing side to side. And normally, you're supposed to feel a vibratory feeling on the ulnar part of your hand. And tactile parameters can be increased in cases like pneumonia, where there is consolidation of the lungs. So after tactile parameters, we move on to our percussion. For percussion, the most important thing you need to nail down is the technique. So how percussion is done is, first of all, you place your non-dominant hand where you're percussing, and you lift all the fingers except the one that you're percussing on. So for example, I'm percussing on my middle finger, I'll place my hand on the chest and lift all the other fingers. The second thing you need to know is the movement should be at the wrist, not on the elbow. It should be at the wrist. And thirdly, when you're percussing, the percussive finger needs to be off the chest cavity at the end of your percussion. For example, you should do this, not this. 
because if you do this, you will dampen the sound. So for percussion, we need to percuss over the three long areas at once. So the normal percussion note is resonant. However, it can be hyperresonant in cases like hyperinflation, pneumothorax, and it can be dull in cases of lung lesions like abscesses, consolidation, or cancer. So after our percussion, the next step is auscultation. And to auscultate, we auscultate over the three lung zones as well using the diaphragm of our stethoscope. So sir, when I place my stethoscope on your chest, can you please breathe in and out? Again, the most important thing to know is you should be comparing side to side. You should not finish with one side then do the other. So when we auscultate, we're listening for two things. The quality of breath sounds and any added sounds. So for breath sounds, the normal breath sounds is called vesicular breath sounds as opposed to bronchial breathing, which is seen in cases like pneumonia. To know what bronchial breathing sounds like, just place the diaphragm of your stethoscope over your trachea. You will hear how that feels like, so you can compare that to your chest. The second thing we're listening for is any added sounds like wheezes or crepitations. So the difference is that wheezes are whistling sounds mostly heard during expiration, while crepitations are mostly heard during inspiration. And crepitations can be divided into fine and coarse. You need to know the causes of fine and you need to know the causes of cause crepitation. So for example, one cause of fine crepitations is something like pneumonia, whether it's consolidation, and then one cause of cause crepitation is pulmonary edema. So after doing your auscultation for breath sounds, next you need to auscultate for vocal resonance. To do that, you simply listen over the three lung zones and ask the patient to say 99. Sir, can you please say 99? 99. 99. 99. 99. So what you normally hear during your vocal resonance is you will hear the patient saying 99 but you won't believe in that clear. In cases whereby it is crystal clear or it's very loud, that means that the vocal resonance is increased and that can be seen in cases like consolidation. After doing our vocal resonance, that means we're finished with the anterior chest. But for respiratory examination, doing the anterior chest is not enough. We also need to do a summarized version of the exam on the posterior chest. So sir, can you please sit up? Thank you. So for posterior chest examination, it's kind of the summarized version of the anterior chest examination. But before we begin, we need to inspect the patient's spine to make sure there is no kyphoscoliosis. After inspecting for any kyphoscoliosis, we will move on to tactile remedies. So sir, can you please do like this? Because of the presence of the two scapulas, we usually ask the patient to hug, or to hug a pillow or hug themselves to get the scapula out of the way. And we begin our tactile parameters. So, sir, when I place my hand on your back, can you please say 99? 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. So, as opposed to the anterior chest here, rather than doing upper, middle, and then axilla, we will fan out. That's how it's done. Sir, you can relax. The next step after tactile parameters is percussion. Sir, can you please breathe in? Thank you. Can you relax? Breathe in again. So when we reach the basis of our lungs, it's a good idea to tell the patient to inspire so that you can feel the end of the lungs where it will turn dull rather than resonant. So after that, our last step is to auscultate. So can you please breathe in? And out. In. So this brings us to the end of our respiratory examination. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment section below. Most importantly, subscribe and thank you.